In the Second World War, the most active of Japan's capital ships were the four Congo-class battleships. Designed by an Englishman named George Thurston, they would be used against their country of origin and the Allied powers, and would prove effective ships despite their old age by the outbreak of the war, thanks to extensive redesigning and upgrading. The origins of the Congo class begin with the British ship, HMS Invincible, launched in 1906. HMS Invincible was the world's first battle cruiser, a ship of similar size and tonnage to a battleship, but which traded armour protection for higher speed. Despite her name, Invincible was sunk at the Battle of Jutland in 1917, but the battlecruiser concept quickly caught on. The Japanese Navy was interested in the idea and took notice of the new battlecruiser. So, as part of the Japanese Emergency Naval Expansion Bill, the Japanese Navy commissioned a new battlecruiser design, the first ship laid down on the 17th of January 1911, at the Vickers Shipbuilding Yard in Barrow in Furness in northwest England. She was launched on May the 18th, 1912, and was transferred to Portsmouth for fitting out. She was completed on the 16th of April 1913, and set sail for Japan shortly after, under the name Condor. Three other ships followed, all built in Japan. Hiei, launched in November 1912, Kirishima, launched in December 1913, and Haruna, launched two weeks after Kirishima. The ships were named after mountains in Japan. All served with the Japanese Navy on patrols in the First World War as training ships in the interwar period, and all four fought in World War II. There were definite similarities between the Congo class and the recently launched battleship HMS Erin, originally built for the Ottoman Navy by the British but seized as hostilities loomed on the horizon in 1918. HMS Erin, which George Thurston also helped design, was in turn based on the dreadnought HMS King George V, launched in 1911. The Congo, therefore, can be considered a close relative of the King George V, and is essentially development of that class in battlecruiser form. This photograph shows Hiei being fitted out in 1913 in the Japanese port of Yokosuka, and gives a good view of the shape and design of the hull. Notice also how high the ship is sitting in the water, before the added weight of all the fittings and weaponry. The Congo class was armed with eight 14 inch guns and four twin turrets, two fore and two aft, designed and built by Vickers. The Congo class was originally designed with 12 inch guns, but Japanese officer Kato Hirohasu argued that the newer and more powerful 14 inch guns in development at the time in Britain would be better. The decision was made to use the larger guns, and the Congo, whose keel had already been laid, had to be partially reconstructed to fit the larger guns. The 14-inch cannons fired a 1,500-pound shell at a muzzle velocity of 775 metres a second at a maximum range of 35.5 kilometres or 22 miles. Secondary armament, in its initial configuration, included 16 152mm guns and casemates along the upper hull. Later, this was reduced to four aside. The removed guns were reused on the Agano-class light cruisers. These guns were partially replaced by the newer 127mm Type 89 guns, which were dual-purpose cannons which could also act as anti-aircraft weapons. Initial anti-aircraft armament consisted solely of four 76mm guns, but additional ones were added throughout the ship's lifespans. As initially constructed, the Congo-class battlecruisers had 203mm of armour at the waterline, 254mm on the face of the 14-inch turrets, and 25mm of deck armour. Extra armour would be added in the reconstructions later on. Power was at first supplied by two sets of direct-drive steam turbines and 36 water tube boilers producing 86,000 horsepower in total, which produced a top speed of just over 27.5 knots. But like with many other aspects of the class, this would change with later modifications. The Congo-class battlecruisers all underwent extensive reconstructions, which led to them being reclassified first as battleships, and later with a further increase in speed, fast battleships. The Washington Naval Treaty, designed to prevent a naval arms race and discourage another war, meant that Japan could construct no new capital ships until 1931. Instead, they began to renovate their older capital ships. In 1929, Congo's first reconstruction commenced. Initially, the ships had simple tripod masts, much like western battleships of the era, but after reconstruction they adopted their very recognisable pagoda masts, 
a trademark of Japanese battleships of the Second World War period. The Japanese believed the pagoda design offered better visibility, and it certainly offered more working space, but Western designers were convinced that such a large and tall superstructure could make the ship top-heavy. Along with the new superstructure design, Congo's armour protection was improved. Weaker areas of the ship's horizontal armour were strengthened. Internal armour protection, particularly around the machinery spaces, was also improved. Anti-torpedo bulges were also fitted. Despite the very large increase in weight, a direct violation of the Washington Naval Treaty, new, more powerful boilers and turbines meant the ship's speed actually increased. She was now capable of more than 30 knots, and the Japanese reclassified her as a fast battleship, capable of keeping up with Japan's aircraft carriers. In December 1934, the Japanese government decided to withdraw from the Washington Naval Treaty, citing it as unfair and biased towards Britain and America, and went ahead in improving their own ships, including the Congo class, and planning to build new larger ones like the Yamato. In her second reconstruction, beginning in 1935, Congo's stern was lengthened by 26 feet, making the ship more streamlined and increasing top speed. Eleven oil-fired boilers replaced the old water tube boilers. The armour belt was improved, and was made a uniform thickness of 203mm, rather than only partially that thickness for some of its length. Diagonal bulkheads were added inside the ship to supplement the belt and protect machinery spaces, and deck armour was improved, both on the top deck and the roof of the machinery spaces and magazines. A plane catapult was added. The ship had been able to carry float planes in the past, but hadn't had a catapult until now. The second reconstruction also saw the first of many anti-air armament changes over the ship's careers. 13mm machine guns, a Hotchkiss design built under license, were fitted. Eventually these were replaced by larger and more powerful 25mm Type 96 autocannons. More of these 25mm cannons were added throughout the war, and in her final configuration, Congo had a total of 122 25mm guns in various single, double and triple mounts. The Type 96 was a staple of Japanese anti-air weaponry, but wasn't a particularly effective weapon. It was flawed with slow elevation and traverse, and small magazines, which had to be replaced often, and that affected the rate of fire. The Congo class's first major action against enemy ships came in the Guadalcanal campaign. The 3rd Battleship Division, consisting of all four Congo class ships, sailed to the Solomon Islands in support of the Japanese ground troops. Congo and Kirishima initially bombarded Henderson Field on Guadalcanal in October 1942. On the 13th of November, the first naval battle of Guadalcanal began, pitting Admiral Callahan against Admiral Abe's force, which included Hiei and Kirishima. Abe's ships were loaded with high explosive for another bombardment of Guadalcanal, and the American ship surprised him. Regardless, he ordered his ships onward, and in the darkness of night, a great close-range fight began, with the two fleets intermingled and opposing ships only a few thousand yards from one another. The entire scene, not unlike a Napoleonic naval battle, with ships of the line pounding one another at close range in a chaotic melee. Hie was the main target for most of the American ships, as she sailed through the American formation with her own searchlights marking her out. She was raked by gunfire, including the five-inch shells of Atlanta, which charged headlong into the fray. The destroyer USS Laffey came as close as 20 feet, and fired into the superstructure, wounding Admiral Abe and killing his chief of staff. Hie was unable to effectively engage the small ships at such close range, so instead engaged New Orleans-class cruiser San Francisco, along with several other Japanese ships. Admiral Callahan was killed in the ensuing fusillade. San Francisco avoided serious internal damage due to the fact that Japanese battleships had high explosive shells loaded for the shore bombardment, and before armor-piercing shells could be readied from the magazines, San Francisco had escaped. Hiei's final engagement was a duel with destroyer USS Aaron Ward. Both ships received hits, but the destroyer was severely damaged and forced to retire. After three quarters of an hour, the intense fighting ceased and the two forces broke apart. Hiei had been heavily damaged and critically her steering gear was crippled. The following day, Hiei was attacked by TBF Avengers and B-17s, sustaining multiple torpedo and bomb hits. Kirishima attempted to tow Hiei, but the ship was still flooding and the threat of submarine attack put an end to the effort. Late on the 13th of November, northwest of Savo Island, Hiei sank perhaps finished off with scuttling charges. On the morning of the next day, Japanese ships under the command of Admiral Condor re-entered Iron Bottom Sound, 
with three cruisers opening up a fresh bombardment on Guadalcanal. US Admiral William Halsey ordered his force to enter the area as well, and at 11pm on the night of the 14th, the fleets met, beginning the second naval battle of Guadalcanal. The US force had been reinforced with two modern battleships, South Dakota and North Carolina class USS Washington, which were more than a match for the aging Kirishima. Several American and one Japanese destroyers were quickly put out of action. South Dakota's electricity supply suffered serious malfunction, and multiple systems, including her radar and fire control, were put out of use. Illuminated by searchlights, South Dakota came under fire from most of Kondo's fleet. South Dakota's fire control and communication equipment were knocked out, but her hull armor wasn't penetrated. Unnoticed by the Japanese, USS Washington was in position and preparing to fire. From a range of just 5,000 meters, Washington engaged Kirishima with their 16-inch guns, which easily punched through the Japanese battleship's relatively thin armor. Kirishima's 14-inch turrets were put out of action, as was her steering gear. The penetrations below the waterline began to flood the ship, and she started to list quite heavily to starboard. After the engagement was over, Kirishima was left crippled and beginning to sink. As with Hiei, attempts were made to tow the ship, but it was too late. The Japanese fleet withdrew from Iron Bottom Sound, and at 3.25 on the morning of the 15th of November, Kirishima rolled over and sank with the loss of 212 crewmen. The engagement between Kirishima and the American battleships was the first engagement in the Pacific Theatre between battleships directly. The remaining ships of the 3rd Battleship Division, namely Harana and Congo, returned to truck and remained there for the rest of the year. Neither Congo nor Harana were involved in any engagements with the enemy in 1943. They took part in a diversionary action, Operation Care, to cover Japanese destroyers evacuating troops from Guadalcanal. Both were docked at Kure Naval Base in early 1943 for the fitting of additional anti-aircraft guns. Congo had concrete set around their steering gear in an attempt to improve protection. Both ships sorted several times throughout 1943, usually in response to American advances or attacks on important bases held by the Japanese, like Atu and Wake Island, but no contact was made with the enemy by the two ships. 1944 brought further changes to the anti-aircraft complement of both ships. In June 1944, Congo and Harana escorted carriers during the enormous Battle of the Philippine Sea, where Harana was hit by two 500-pound bombs from US carrier aircraft. The battle was nicknamed the Marianas Turkey Shoot by the Americans. Hundreds of Japanese aircraft were shot down, and three carriers were lost. On October the 25th, Congo fought in the battle off Samar, part of the larger battle of Leyte Gulf. She scored hits on two US destroyers, as well as the escort carrier Gambler Bay. She also engaged and sunk USS Samuel B. Roberts. The Americans fought back fiercely, sinking several Japanese ships, and the Japanese broke off. Congo suffered damage from several near misses from bombs during the retreat, and retired to Brunei. Brunei came under attack from US aircraft, and Congo, along with other ships, set sail for Kure on the 16th of November. This was to be her last voyage. Not long after midnight, on the morning of the 21st of November, the first fleet, including Congo, was passing through the Formosa Strait, later known as the Taiwan Strait. Shortly before three in the morning, the submarine USS Sea Lion moved in to engage the Japanese fleet. She fired a spread of torpedoes, two of which hit Congo, and a third which hit and destroyed the Urakaze, killing everyone on board. Over the next three hours, Congo's flooding worsened, and by 5.15am she was listing at 45 degrees. The ship lost power, and the order to abandon ship was given at around 5.20. Five minutes later, the forward 14-inch gun magazine detonated, splitting the hull. Over 1,200 sailors died, with 237 saved by the ship's destroyer escort. Now, only one ship of the class remained. Haruna returned to Brunei for repairs after Leyte Gulf, and ran aground on a coral reef on November the 22nd, sustaining serious underwater damage. The following month, she evaded torpedoes from a US submarine. The fleet she was sailing with was attacked again a few days later, and several ships, including the carrier Junio, were damaged. By the end of the year, Haruna had arrived safely at Kure and underwent repairs and refurbishing. In summer 1945, American planes began a series of heavy air attacks on the remaining Japanese ships at Kure. On the 28th of July, American bombers focused on Haruna, 
and she received eight bomb hits. At 4.15pm, she sank at her moorings, settling on the bottom of the bay, marking the demise of the final Congo-class battleship, with the death of 65 crew in the air attacks. In 1946, the wreck was raised and scrapped. Considering their age, the Congo-class battleships were at a big disadvantage against modern US battleships like the North Carolina and South Dakota class, not to mention America's huge carrier fleet. They compared well, however, to American battleships constructed around the same period, like the New York class. They remain amongst the most iconic Japanese warships of the last century, and were potent symbols of Japan's naval power in the early 20th century.